Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the future of .NET. There were some pretty huge announcements about what is going to go on with the future of .NET, especially around the release of .NET 5, where all of these various technologies that have been percolating together are all coming together under one umbrella. Uh, there will be one .NET going forward. So what's going on right now is Microsoft are having their annual developer conference, Microsoft Build. And at that announcement, they announced what is going to happen with the upcoming release of .NET 5. But first, you need to have a bit of a history lesson to understand exactly why any of this is relevant. So at this conference, they announced .NET 5. Now, .NET 5, to understand it, we need to kind of go back in time to understand .NET in general. Now, rumor has it that Microsoft used to be a somewhat predatory company. As you know, some people say that anyways. <laughs> so here's the problem with Microsoft. They did things to lock you into their platform, and .NET was no exception. .NET was a set of APIs and libraries that ran on top of a conference common language runtime, which you can think of like the Java virtual machine. And these provided all kinds of features and functionality on Windows machines. So the combination of the framework and the common language runtime ran on all the Microsoft platforms and only the Microsoft platforms. They provided really easy access to um, UI development, uh, SQL databases behind the scenes, uh, internet access and so on, especially through the framework class library. There was a huge amount of native support, basically replacing uh, like the Win32 API with a much, much easier to use, but C Sharp VB.net and C++ via CLI friendly interface. So this was kind of the programming future of Microsoft platforms, at least for a lot of them. And this is way back in 2001, 2002 era. Uh, so that was what started off. And then since then, uh, um, well, we saw the launch of Xamarin. Now, Xamarin was an open source implementation. You've probably heard of Mono. Mono was created by Xamarin. Uh, it is the cross-platform implementation of the common language runtime and most of the .NET framework libraries. So this enabled you to run Mono or C Sharp or uh, VB.NET applications and code using the full libraries or almost the full libraries across a plethora of devices, including Linux, uh, Mac, uh, Android, and iOS. And this was a separate company. It used to cost three or $400 a year to have a license. and But it did kind of bring you an open source implementation of those languages and of the runtime. This was back again when Microsoft did not play particularly well with the open source world. And again, the idea behind the .NET and the whole CLR and all that stuff was to lock you into Microsoft platforms by getting the developers to develop for their API instead of choosing something cross-platform like Java. And the thing about it is .NET runtime other than being locked in on a platform was very, very good, which is why people would pay money for Xamarin to run it on iOS and Android. So next up, Microsoft bought Xamarin. And it's like, okay, that is definitely development. And then shortly after that one, uh, Microsoft actually open sourced and released um, all of the Xamarin stuff completely free. So we are definitely moving right along in the evolution of .NET here. There is quite a bit of a different world than when it started. Now Microsoft is actually buying and shipping technology that makes running code on uh, Linux, Android, and Mac easier. Now that's a little shocking. But that's what happened with the Xamarin purchase. And then, of course, they released it for free, uh, completely open sourced on GitHub. Now, at the same time, they were also working on something called .NET Core. Now, .NET Core was kind of a, a subset of .NET. So instead of being the full fat .NET framework, uh, they've shipped this .NET Core. Now, the big thing about .NET Core is it was designed to run across all platforms, not just on Microsoft's platforms. And it was also, I, it, I think, entirely open source from uh, the, the very beginning to the very end under the MIT license. Um, and .NET Core was, again, a subset of .NET or a different implementation of .NET that ran across platforms. In the very first release of .NET Core, it was all about server development. So um, they focused on the technologies behind the scenes, then uh, things like ASP.NET implementation and so on, entity frameworks and such were added in .NET Core 2. And then .NET Core 3, it became much more full-blown. It was more about developing uh, desktop applications as well as server applications. So now you finally had 
in the version of .NET Core, or through the release of .NET Core, a version of the Microsoft runtime and um, .NET frameworks that would work across many platforms, but was completely open source development and also contained a number of tools for things like building and deploying. So more and more functionality was moved into .NET Core and .NET Core is part of the new open and cross-platform Microsoft that seems to be evolving. So at this point in time, we have the .NET framework, which is up to version 4.9. We have .NET Core, of which version 3 is being released kind of right now. And that leads us to .NET 5. So what is .NET 5 all about? Well, this is bringing it all together. So until now, uh, we've had .NET Framework and .NET Core kind of developing in parallel. With .NET Framework, at least aspects of it, such as Windows Forms, being only available still on Windows platforms, mostly for legacy reasons at this point, whereas .NET Core is obviously the future. Well, uh, .NET Core is far more than the future now, because you will see here, we are announcing that the next release after .NET Core 3.0 will be .NET 5. Now that numbering system doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why is it going from three to five? Well, they're taking the .NET framework um, versioning system there. So 4.9 is the most recent version of the .NET framework and they're releasing it all as .NET 5. So essentially what this means is as of .NET 5, there is only one .NET and that's basically .NET Core. So along the way, there are little bits and pieces of uh, .NET framework that are gonna become legacy items, things that are gonna be no longer existing. And in those particular cases, they're going to want you to move over to different um, platforms or tools that they are providing. So there are a few things that traditional C Sharp and VB.NET application developers using the full .NET framework won't have support for. But what you will get in .NET Core coming to the 5.0, it will remain open source, cross-platform, uh, support leveraging uh, specific platform specific capabilities such as Windows Forms and WPF on Windows and native bindings to each platform from Xamarin. So basically the Xamarin form stuff is being merged in with the um, Windows form stuff uh, to make a cross platform implementation there. It is going to be high performance, side by side installation, small project files, capable command line interface, which is a lot of what .NET Core brought to the equation. And it's going to work with Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac and Visual Studio Code. Uh, however, there are uh, a little gotchas here. So we see here, here is the schedule for bringing us to .NET 5. Uh, and really we only care about here because then we're going into .NET 6, 7, and 8. And that's all just wishful thinking at this point. So uh, .NET Core 3 is basically being released in July. Um, in September, Core 3 GA or the general, um, general, general availability as opposed to the release candidate version is going to be September. And then November 3.1 is coming out. And then in November of 2020, so a year away, there will just be one .NET and that is .NET 5. So there's gonna be none of this .NET framework or .NET core stuff or anything. There is literally going to be just .NET and it is going to run across all the platforms involved. In fact, it's officially very Java-like now. It's going to be one code base with one UI across a number of different platforms with all of the different supporting libraries and frameworks and everything there. So there's no more wondering, okay, if I take this .NET application, can I run it in .NET Core stuff? Because there will literally be just one framework across all platforms. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the technical bits and bobs, things about the uh, head of time or the JIT comp compilation objects, uh, sorry, options in using uh, .NET Core going forward, where things are going to migrate, how things are going, uh, be sure to read this article. I will link it down below. Um, it's definitely an interesting development. I guess what you're going to see out of this is essentially .NET Core will go away. Um, you will see um, Mono go away. You will see uh, .NET go away. You will see Xamarin go away. And in their place, out of the ashes, is going to be one unified .NET 5. And then going forward, you will see .NET 5 developed in the open as a completely cross-platform project. So what this basically means is come November of 2020, there will no longer be a Xamarin. There will no longer be a .NET Core. There will no longer be a .NET Framework or a common language runtime or any of these other things. There will be one entity, .NET 5. 
and that is it. .NET 5 will be completely open source and completely cross-platform and available both JIT and AOT if it makes sense on the platform. And I think this is pretty good, to be honest. I, I, I don't see a lot of negatives here, but then again, I am not really a Microsoft hater. Of the three major companies in tech right now between Google, Apple, and Microsoft, in the last couple of years, frankly, Microsoft has been by far the least evil, in my humble opinion. But uh, I know some people have some very deep seed hatred of Microsoft. So I'll be interested to hear what your take is of this movie, of this move they've done here. Do you think it's, um, it's a trap or do you think it's just Microsoft getting with the way things are done these days? I, I'm interested to hear what your opinion is on this. Now on top of it, and I'm not really covering it too much in this particular video, but as the same developer conference, there was a new release of .NET Core 3.0 Preview 5. Now keep in mind, .NET Core is essentially going to be the heart of the future version of .NET 5. And what it got, and a lot of it, what facilitated it to be able to merge with .NET itself is things like WPF and Windows Form improvements, uh, new SQL client, uh, SQL, uh, what's new there? Uh, the ability to publish a single EXE. This is actually kind of nice through the .NET publish commands. You can actually add the command publish single file and have it build into a single EXE, which will automatically extract itself to a temporary file the first time it's run to make deployment much, much easier. Uh, JSON serializer and changes there. So there are a number of improvements in um the uh, the .NET Core 3.0 preview that was, it's I believe it's available right now. Uh, on top of this, kind of amazingly, Microsoft also announced that they are going to be shipping a Linux kernel in, I believe, the next version of Windows 10, uh, enabling Windows services or Windows functionality to run side by side in Windows much nicer. Uh, it's a strange new world we live in where Microsoft really does seem to be embracing this whole open source, open development kind of concept and going true cross-platform and I'd be again curious to hear what you think do you see any downsides I don't hear I can see like .NET 5 is probably going to break some code for Xamarin developers and .NET framework developers I think .NET core developers should be fine because their platform is eventually kind of evolving into what is going to become .NET 5 but there is no doubt some .NET framework uh, code that's going to be left behind and a lot of Xamarin code that is going to be left behind because it's no longer really needed anymore but for the most part other than that particular negative I don't really see any huge downsides here but again I don't hate Microsoft so it could be that some of you have a much different uh, perspective on this and you might just be thinking it's a trap and you know what I'd be interested in hearing where you think the trap is in the comments down below all right that's it for now talk to you all later goodbye